How do you get this stuff to the people that need it on the front lines or wherever? Um, like first we're getting the request from them and like understanding what they need. Then we're like making the the package. Hey Jake. Yeah. Why are you here? So we wanted to come and document what I consider like the more underreported side of the situation here in Ukraine. So you will see like Russia says everyone here is a Nazi. And then it's like, yeah, there is a little problem with like fascist militant groups here and there. But I always explain to people it's Eastern Europe. Of course, that's going to happen. It happens everywhere in Europe, it happens in Western Europe. And I feel like those guys are very good at media. They get their propaganda out there. So it almost looks bigger than it is. And I, I just wanted people to know, like, hey, there are other groups doing the exact same stuff. They're just a little bit more quiet. People are not that focused on them. So I wanted to come here, film with these guys, film with, you know, um, the resistance committee, people like that. And I think, you know, it's important to show every side of the, of the conflict, you know. And obviously as well, not everybody's ideological. A lot of people are just joining because they want to defend their country and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. So what do you make of the whole situation in your uh, experience here? How long have you been here? Man, I've been coming to Ukraine since 2016. So I used to film a lot on the front lines in the east before the invasion, when it was just the kind of proxy war. Um, this is, like, I think, like my 10th time here in Ukraine. And I think it's just really sad. Like, it's really sad to see Kiev militarized. You know, like, I really love Kiev. And coming here now and being on the Maidan and seeing, like, hedgehogs there, there's like lads patrolling with guns, there's sandbags, it's like, what a shame, you know, it's really sad. And then, you know, at the end of the day, Russia has invaded another country, it's an imperialist force. And I think any time that happens, it's like, that's bad, you know what I mean? What do you make of Russia's narrative? I think it's insane. You know, like, I, I, I keep telling people this year, I've watched a really interesting doc just randomly before the invasion called Credit for Murder. And it's a great doc about the huge neo-Nazi presence in Russia that used to be there as like, Quite frankly, like, there's a lot of evidence that it's linked to the FSB. Um, there's a lot of, they had like fucking neo-Nazi serial killer gang, Sanitaire 88, like murdering people on camera uh, in Moscow, you know, in St. Petersburg. So for me, I was like, wow, how ironic that like Russia can tell that everyone in Ukraine is a Nazi. And it's like, they had a way worse problem. You know what I mean? So I was really surprised. I was like, that's the narrative they're going with. At first they were like, no NATO expansion. It's like, yeah, okay, we all understand NATO, whatever. But then they just flipped it. Like everyone's a Nazi. It's like, what? Like Zelensky's a Jew, <laughs> like 73% of 44 million people voted him in power in the same time when the fascist parties formed a coalition and they got like less than 3% of the votes. Like, if it's a Nazi junta, it's the worst one that ever existed, you know what I mean? Because they had a chance to bring the Nazis in and they didn't. So yeah, there's problems with Nazism. We've seen it, we know it's a problem, but this idea that whole country is Nazi because of like what is a fringe part of it, I think is just ridiculous, you know what I mean? Not to say that we shouldn't say like, wow, fucking hell, there are Nazi battalions with you know high grade weapons. But I do understand that right now, people in Ukraine are like, look, we're invaded, all hands on deck. And you know, war isn't, the perfect ideological kind of nest that you know people sitting at home peacefully want it to be and that's the way it is what about the whole nato expansion narrative what do you make of that like uh, you know it's a it has a lot of traction in the western leftists um what I, where do you think uh, the balance lies there it's a good question and i really think like i mean i'm not that particularly involved politically i do understand that you know it's like oh there's all this nato interaction but a lot of those particularly like armchair leftists that are bringing that up right now i kind of think like that's kind of irrelevant right now children are being bombed to bits in the east you know there was a massacre not far from here people executed and you want to talk about nato expansion right now for me i'm like that's quite crass you know what i'm saying it's like when kids are getting killed there's evidence that girls have been raped in the east by russian soldiers oh but what about nato expansion it's too late for that <laughs> you know what i'm saying and even so if it was like okay that's a good point NATO expansion it's like okay then does that mean that you then invade a whole country and murder and massacre people if you think that's okay you know you're totally authoritarian because to tie someone up and execute them for nothing is like one of the most authoritarian things you can do to somebody so to me i think like the time for all of that is for Twitter. Let them do that on Twitter, let them moan. And like people like yourselves, you're here at Operation Solidarity, it's like people are doing work here. And I think if you focus on all of that, like the kind of the debates and all of that, it's just like, you're never gonna get any work done. So for me, I'm kind of like, look, people are dying, kids are dying. That's what I think is important to report on. You know, if Ukraine went and invaded Russia somehow and killed all their kids, you know, we'd be like, what the fuck's going on? Why are they doing that? It didn't happen that way. Russia did this. So, and, and you know, like some old lady, in Kharkiv, who now doesn't have a house or her kids are dead now. You're gonna go and tell her like, 
well, NATO shouldn't have expanded. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't know what's going on. So I think it's a very like privileged position to debate from, you know what I mean? And frankly, I don't give a shit about it. Like, I don't really want to hear it. NATO's done a lot of bad stuff across the world. The whole world is full of bad people. It's always going to be that way. For me, I'm focused on what's happening on the ground. You know what I mean? And right now that's massacres and invasion. Thanks a lot, Jake. Cool, man. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks.